Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a, I don't say it's a regularly scheduled because it wasn't originally scheduled, but we will tell you why we're here shortly, meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. Uh, we just have a couple of uh, things that we need to do. Um, so we're not planning on staying here all night. Correct, Jeffrey? Correct. All right. <coughs> so. Our first order of business is uh, minutes from June 6th. I have motion. I have motion we accept the minutes from June 6th. Seconded. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of June 6th as presented. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have 3 0 on that, Jeffrey. Next up is sewer or septic septage rates yes so um we have rich brenda from the wastewater treatment plant here in case you have any questions but um hi rich hey tom how are you doing very good thanks for coming tonight no problem so a, a couple of weeks ago rich had reached out to me and just mentioned that uh, sludge removal costs have been going up um, and since in the last uh, two fiscal years or three fiscal years it's gone up over 40 percent it's going to increase another seven and a half percent come July 1st um, I think it's been a couple years since we changed the septage rates uh, and so <coughs> Current rates are 10 cents a gallon for loads up to 1,200 gallons, and then 12 cents a gallon for loads greater than 1,200 gallons. Um, and speaking with Rich, he suggested a flat rate of 12 cents a gallon um, for all load sizes would be sufficient to um, cover the the additional costs of, of sludge removal. Okay. Hey, Rich, can I ask you a question? Yes. What do you think about our uh, our uh, our sludge hauling go down the road? Um, well, unfortunately, these facilities that accept sludge, as you know, are they're becoming fewer and fewer, and the and the costs are going up um, at all the facilities. Currently, most of our sludge goes to Lowell, um, and it, prior, well, probably fifteen years ago, most of it went to Fitchburg. Right. Pittsburgh would, you know, thicken it and incinerate it, and they shut down their incineration process. Um, going forward, I mean, I think I think you're going to see fewer and fewer plants accept septage, and on top of that, costs are going to be greater. Um, you know, there's fewer and fewer, and they're going to they're going to end up having to offset their their operational costs to accept it from somewhere. And unfortunately, they're going to have to go through the users to get that. So, 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 Rich, have you heard have you heard anything on sludge removal? The 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 sludge that is are, are is there any is there any talk amongst the the local facilities on on a plant? Are are we looking at you know bio bio stuff? Are we you know as biofuels or anything like that? Or are we just putting our Head in the sand about this stuff. Well, at this point, um, Greenfield had stepped out and they wanted to they wanted to build a regional digester. I don't know if you remember that, Tom. Yes, I do. And um, that hasn't really gone anywhere. We went to several meetings, um, and I haven't heard anything about that in two or three years. Um, I think I think probably the the talks on that should get <laughs> should get. Um, should be restarted um especially with the trucking fees uh the trucking fees alone per load have, have gone up substantially with the cost of diesel um all these contracts you know through franklin <laughs> county solid waste have to include a, an escalation or fuel costs for trucking um we've reached out to montague too tom just to see if they can accept our set our our sludge um, just because they're a much larger facility and they do have they do have thickening capacity and uh, most of our sludge 
Well, our sludge is actually pretty good considering we don't have any industrial that comes into the plant. It's all municipal. Yeah. So by and large, as 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 sludge goes, it's a it's not as bad as some sludges that come out of some wastewater treatment plants. Yeah. So just because it doesn't have the contaminants that you know that would that would come with a a sludge from an industrial city. You right. know. So so like in Monty, is Monty still using their filter press? Do they still have yes, as far as, I, as far as I know, they are. We've reached out to them. They haven't gotten back to us. They want to kind of assess where they're going with that. Um, the, the big thing when we, I, actually, I don't know if you realize this, at one point in time, Montague was accepting our sledge. Yes. Our yeah. sludge. Yeah. And. Um, they had problems. They did. They, they, they took a, they took a good thing, maybe a little too far. Yeah. Um, not being on the inside and knowing what was going on, but, um, they did take it. It, it saved the town substantial money just yeah. because of the trucking cost. Because that trucking cost through Franklin County solid waste is, you know, it's not only it's by mile and plus there's an escalator for fuel, for fuel costs. Yeah. So we're saving a lot of money and that was, that was a great thing for us. Um, and the haulers actually liked it too because they could do several loads a day to Montague out of us, Deerfield, Hadley, some of the other neighboring plants were going to Montague too. Yeah. So. So, so I, I was just, I was reading something, we were talking to some, we, we were doing something, we were talking about, um, and, and Montague came up and they're, they're looking at doing some type. of uh, processing of their sludge up by um, by the regional dog facility so okay so maybe maybe you want to reach out to them and 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 see if they want someone to par I mean we could we could partner I, I don't, I'm just afraid of what's going to happen if we don't if we don't look at something you know we wake yeah. up we, we wake up one morning and 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 you know like you said you go to the incinerator in Fitchburg, it was a great thing. I mean, they, they would thicken it and they, they would throw it on their conveyor belt and they'd burn it and they were, you know, they were, it was, it was, it was all well and good. But all, next next thing something happens, DEP comes in and they get too much copper or whatever it is and they shut them down, so. Yeah. All right. Um, we'll, we'll reach out to Montague again, see what the status is of what they're doing. Um, and like I said, I mean, by and large, I mean, I think our, our sludge would probably be preferential to them. It's, it's not as hard for them to handle, you know? Yeah. So you, you haven't heard it. You haven't heard anything about the state doing anything with, uh, uh, processing sludge and, 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 uh, you, you haven't, you know, using it as a biofuels or anything, you know, creating methane or whatever you haven't heard. Boy, anything. I haven't, Okay. I haven't heard a thing, Tom, about that. All right. Thank you, Rich. I just wonder. All right. Any uh, Nathaniel, um, Crystal questions? No, nope. not Nathaniel. So your recommendation is uh, twelve cents a gallon, and only except from uh, septage from Sunderland properties only. Is that correct, Rich? That is correct. Um, what they, one thing I kind of want to correct. One thing that Jeff said um, is it's not gonna it's not gonna cover the cost of our sludge coming from the plant. I'm just talking about the sludge that we, the additional sludge we generate from taking septage. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Thank you. All right. So at this time, uh, we have a recommendation from the uh, Rich Brenda, who represents the uh, the operator of our wastewater treatment plant, to uh, have a flat rate of twelve cents per gallon, regardless of load size, for Sunderland properties only. For 2022 septic charges, do I have a motion? I have a motion that we raise it to 12 cents, regardless of the number of gallons. Seconded. Okay. So we have a motion made and seconded. Discussion. Um, I I I think for the our area and across the state, 12 cents is not not an outrageous not an outrageous in the operation of the wastewater treatment plant is one of the uh, 
least expensive. Every time Time Bond comes out with a uh, study on wastewater treatment plants, we're usually one of the lower rates across the state. So, all right. So we have a motion made and seconded to uh, have a flat rate of twelve cents per gallon of septage, septage sent to the Sunland wastewater treatment plant from Sunland properties only. Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Thanks, Rich. 12 cents. 3 zero. Thank you. Thanks, Rich. All right. Uh, Jeffrey, tonight's a sewer night. Sewer yes. user fees for short-term rentals. Yeah. So the assessors brought this to my <laughs> attention um, and that the, there are some... Uh, properties in the town that are being used as short-term rentals, uh, colloquially known as B Airbnbs. Um, and so I reached out to the state and got a list of those properties that are registered as short-term rentals, um, which means they actually pay money to the state and then the state reimburses us. Only one of those properties is on sewer, but consistent with our uh, sewer unit policy, it, for home-based businesses, it's um, either the number of bathrooms or fixtures in the home. Uh, that if there's a home-based business, that's how many sewer units they're charged. Um, so I guess it, it's kind of novel, but you know, it, it is a home-based business. They're get generating income from the short-term rental. And so um, they prepared a letter to the property owner stating, hey, we've learned that this is an income property. It's not just a residence. Um, this is our policy for home-based businesses. And uh, so we, assuming that you agree, we're the next sewer bill you see will charge you based on the number of fixtures in, in your property. So I, one thing I would, I would add to that, Jeff, I don't think it's novel. I, th I think it's it's been in the town for, since we've had the wastewater. Um, I, I know in particular that, that we have had home, business, home businesses and, and we have always been very consistent with our home businesses that, that utilize the septic system that they're they're charged for the use of the home business that utilize if, if you use a home business that utilizes our wastewater treatment plant then then they home businesses have increased um compensation to the town because they're they're using it in greater than what's used by a single family home now over the years we have looked at um basing our sewer user fees on use of water. That's what many communities do. We have never, we, we've talked about that three or four times in the last, in the last 20 years, but there's never been a, a, a big appetite to do that. So that's, um, if, 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 if that, if that seems to be more of a, if there's, if that's has changed, We'd love to hear about it, and we would we would work with the water district to, to kind of put something in place, and 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 base it off from water uses versus um, the flat fee. Right now, the flat the, the fee is a little over three hundred dollars, and we're going to be talking shortly about three hundred twelve dollars and fourteen cents. Most people consider that a pretty reasonable sewer user expense. To, to continue, just so people know, I mean, when we look at if an apartment complex is on our sewer system, they're paid by the units. If a laundromat is on the sewer unit, they are paid by the number of laundry units. So if you have 12 washing machines, then it's 12 tie-ins. Um, and included in apartments, if you have, in addition to apartments, if they have washing machines, those washing machines are charged separately. So we've been pretty consistent for a long, long time. So that's why I, I, 
you know, you could say it's fair, unfair, whatever, but it's consistent. Um, and if somebody wants to change so the amount of water, that's fine too. We can we can discuss that. But we'd have to talk with the water district because we don't control the water. Yeah. Thoughts, Crystal and Nathaniel? I mean, I think it's a good precedent to reaffirm in terms of Airbnbs because in the future we may see more properties in Sunderland that are on sewage moving into Airbnbs with the state. Um, so I don't think it's a bad idea for us to reaffirm that in, you know, right now and make make that clear to residents in the town that that is the policy going forward. Um, I am also not opposed to discussing moving to a water usage based system, um, which does seem like it would be in the long run more fair all around because you can have single family homes that have six people living there that are still using more water than necessarily the Airbnb would. So I do understand the the draw of that and if, if mm -hmm. there is if there is movement on, in the town to do so I would certainly support looking into that it, it, it's interesting thing we when we when we, when we talked about it the past it, it seems that We treat we treat all sewers e sewer users equally, not necessarily fairly, um, by charging the one fee. Um, but we have heard in the past the reason that we why there hasn't been is because probably the people that use more water um, are people with with children, um, and they may have to. A harder ability to pay with all the other expenses with children so and, and I don't know if it's true or not but that's been used as a conversation point in the past so <coughs> I, I've been a proponent of basing it off the meter and if you if you did use meter people say well I water my lawn in the summertime typically what happens is that you look the, the you you look at your water use between October and whatever February or March in that six months and then you would just double it and that would and they they most most communities don't don't look at summer usage because of filling swimming pools and irrigation and all those other things so, that makes but sense again too. we'd have I, I think if we looked at if we looked at <coughs> the town the way it's laid out and who has sewer and who has water I don't think there's I don't think anybody that had if you have sewer you probably have town water so you probably have town water i think um that would make sense i wouldn't see somebody who has a well and also sewer that just and i don't think that sense. happens at all it, it may happen yeah. i just don't think that's a lot of okay but we i i just know trying to meter sewage is not easy because of metering sewer is not easy yeah <laughs> Logistical problem <coughs> with major issue. Nice. <laughs> so, okay, so right now, Jeff, what we're what I'm seeing is that we're going to send a letter to the property owner. Yep. Okay. And we'll keep an eye for more properties that okay. are similar situated. Okay. Any any comments about that? What thoughts, Crystal? No, I'm just wondering, and again, I'm not real big on these studies, but if there's a way to kind of determine. You know, just even before we start really thinking about moving to a pay per usage, mm -hmm. how much that adds to the billing ability. You know what I mean? So right now you can send out a flat bill to everybody, right? Once you have to start sending your bills based on usage, how much more work is that? How much more time involvement is it? Is the town at the end of the day gonna actually do? We 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 are creating more work. Well, I know we're creating more work. Yeah. There's there's no doubt. But is it cost effective for the town to create more work, or are we gonna really be sucking up any potential increase for the town in the cost of doing this billing? Nope. 
You don't think so? Uh, I, I, what, what's going to happen is that we're going to we're going to put more administrative cost to sewer users. Yeah. So so your it, let's say you were on sewer, I was on sewer, Nathaniel on sewer, right? If if we're just normal sewer users, our bill probably not going to go up. It's probably not going to go down. It's probably going to stay about equal. Mm -hmm. All right. The 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 heavy users. And Nathaniel had a point, very good point, is like there are some houses that, that now that you see there's seven cars in the driveway. Correct. There, I'm sure their water usage goes up. Conversely, their sewer usage is going up versus someplace like your mom. Right. A single person doing laundry for one person, showering for one person, cooking her, for her, one person. Her, her, her sewer bill is going to go down. The, the family that has two kids or three kids that are doing laundry all the time, like you said, laundry, their sewer bill is going to go up. The single or family of two that do, their bills are probably going to go down. So I, it, there will be, it'll, it'll, we, it, the bills will be dispersed, but. <clears throat> um, but the cost of all that will get absorbed into the. And, and I'm, let, let's say right now caught, we run the sewer system for $300,000, right? When you add that administrative cost to it, it now it's going to be $320,000. Okay. So that's why I guess maybe that's, that's one reason why there's never been a real yeah. push to try it. Because right now, if you, if you go, and I'm going to say the Deerfield, and, Deer, and, and, and we know kind of what other, if you told somebody in Deerfield that your sewer cost is $312, they would, they're probably double that. Oh, more than that. Yeah. But but that's what costs run their, their system. Yeah. I will also just to add that there is also the sort of environmental stewardship part of it, where if we tie the, the sewage to water usage, it's an extra incentive for homeowners to find ways to reduce their water usage. To find, you know, remind the kids to turn the water off, not not water the lawn seven times in a week, maybe water it six times in a week or four times or two times. It does add that extra incentive in a time, in an era we're moving into where water scarcity is going to start becoming more of an issue. Not necessarily for Sunderland residents, but just in general, I don't think it's a bad thing for us to further incentivize that. Nope. It's not a bad thing. But it, there's, a, there's a cost. We can talk about that. I mean, and, and we'll hear in the next next you know month or two. Let's let's hear what people you know people start talking. If they start yeah. telling you that they 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 want to do something different, then we can. We, first thing we have to do though, we have to talk to the water district because we we have to get the numbers from them. So, if there is interest, that seems like the first good step would then be going to the water district and saying, can we pull the numbers and get an idea? If it turns out that like water usage across the town is so uniform that doing all this would just be to make one person pay 10 more dollars over here and that person to pay 10 more or less, it may end up being that it doesn't even make sense to do all that for more administrative costs in order for it to be a tiny little difference. We also might find that these four houses are using 10 times the water of Crystal's mom. And that might be something that we, we look at and say, okay, you know, there, there are people in this town with one income subsidizing or on fixed incomes subsidizing the sewer usage of people who have multiple incomes, lots of kids, whatever it is. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. I'm sure my mom loves being the example here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mom. Well, uh, well no, well, but could, it's I true. Say, it, I mean, I could say... Right. We could say I'm Al teasing. Richards or... or right. But, right, or, these are when, people when, that... When, so, when Sophie Bashinsky was in her house at 120, yeah. you could use Sophie, Sophie as right. an example. Right, and, and that's the thing. They... There's a big difference from a single elderly person to a family of five. Or, or, or a single 30-year-old, too, or 20-something. Yeah, they, they may use more than the, than the elder, yeah. but still it's less than a family of four or five. Yeah. Or, or if it's a, a single grad student who's working a full-time job and going to UMass and are only home for four hours a day to flush the toilet yeah. once, I mean, there is definitely a, a gradient there. So. Absolutely. Yep. So, so Jeff, I guess we're, uh, we're okay with sending the uh, sewer letter out. Great. Okay. Yep. Uh, Juneteenth discussion. What do you got? Yep. So... And this is why we're here today, by the way. Yeah, so uh, um, 
I wanted to say that that so a town meeting Juneteenth or the bylaws were changed to reference Mass General Laws. Juneteenth is one of the laws. Um, I was under the impression that it wasn't going to be we weren't going to be able to do it this year. Um, but after speaking with council, um, we can offer it as a holiday this year. Um, it hasn't been officially listed on the ho the holiday schedule. Um, so I wanted to present it to the select board as an option. Um, if you choose to vote to add it as a holiday, June 19th is a Sunday this year, so it would be um, it would be a holiday for town employees on Monday, June 20th. So this would be all town employees, police, fire, town offices, everybody? Yes. Okay. Thank you. What's the board's prerogative? I, I think they should have it. You know, last year when it came up, it was just... Last year, it was a very quick it decision. Happened, it happened with short, short notice. Short notice for everybody. This year, you know, we've already said that definitely we want it going. And, you know, and I just think this year they should get it. It does feel like town meeting was a mandate from the town. And Correct. They, I don't think they, they intended for us to wait in the year. I feel like this is the will of the, of the townspeople. So I would totally be on board with that myself. The, the the only the only um, the only we do have a contract with a, a negotiated contract with one group that is working that scheduled to work we would include them also correct yes absolutely and, and and we would we would we would tell them what we're planning on doing without prejudice right or precedent yep you're right or yep. precedent Pre precedent and or precedent right yeah Okay. Right. right. So if something comes up two years from now and another holiday gets added, they don't automatically get it. It's a decision making process again. I, I would say one <clears throat> you and Nathaniel, if if you take both your conversations and, and, and sum it, you're you're spot on. Last year it was it came up what, within a week or two and that there was a, a yep. new holiday, right? Yeah. So we did not have time to react as a town. Correct. This year we did have a Warren article specifically about Juneteenth and it, it passed as, so our town has acknowledged that it's an important date and we need to, that they should conform with state. Mm -hmm. So so now we have that vote behind yep. it. So I agree, I, I think. So I guess at this time I will enter into I would ent uh, entertain a motion to uh, to follow state guidelines and and for this year offer Juneteenth off as a town holiday that will be so celebrated on the 20th of June and Jeff would uh, talk to our uh, patrolman's union to ensure um, that they understand that it, it's part of not not to set a precedent, not to set right. Yep. Okay. All right. I motion that um, we have Juneteenth this year as a holiday. That Jeff kick, takes care of it with the police union, and it will be observed on the twentieth this year. Seconded. There you go. Made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeffrey. Juneteenth. Three zero. Three zero. Okay. You're yeah. going to make people happy when you talk to them tomorrow, aren't you? <coughs> You're going to be the favorite guy. For a day. <laughs> For a day. <laughs> okay. All right. Insurance Advisory Committee. Jeff? Yes. So, um... I put together a list 
um, uh, of committee members, as I mentioned two meetings ago, I think. Um, the specifics are laid out in Mass General Laws, third, Chapter 32B, Section 3. Um, the committee is supposed to be eight members. You know, speaking with council, they said, hey, if we're, it's probably okay if you only have seven, because um, I was, I was kind of struggling to find eight uh, people who would be eligible. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, and I'll just council also avoid uh, said to avoid um, putting managers on on the committee, um, but I think that in a town such as ours that might be hard, um, just because we have so few full time employees. Um, but that that was one thing that and then said aside from the retiree, which is a select board appointee, you know. I should be reaching out to the various groups and asking them to send a representative. So uh, the groups that I had in laid out were um, Union 38, representing the school, um, non-union school employees. For, for the audience, the school is the bulk of employees in, in the town of Sunderland. So um, having both of those groups represented made some sense to me. Um, the police officers union, the Sunderland Public Library, somebody from the highway department, um, and then in the memo I wrote two people representing other town employees to fill out the, the seven, but we wouldn't need necessarily seven. Um, we could have just one um, representing other town employees. and then So if that lo list looks good to you, then what I would do is go out to each of these groups, ask them to nominate somebody to serve on the committee or appoint somebody, and then um, also develop a list of potential retirees or ask that you reach out to me individually um, with names of people, retirees that you may know of that you think would be good for the position or, or for the appointment, and then I would come back with, with the complete list and say, here's who the committee is, and then you could vote to appoint the retiree. I have a couple of good questions on that. Um, will the, whatever the, the committee is doing, involve the members of the committee voting on things? So this would be an entirely advisory committee. What the law says is that the goal of the committee is to have a majority report to present to the select board, but it is not binding on the select board. So how I envision it working is bringing in our, our current insurance um, provider and saying, here's what our current plan is, here's the potential things that we could do to change it, what are the committee's goals, um, and then look at other options, other insurance providers, and write a report to the select board saying, this is what we think the plan should look like, this is who we think you should, the town should go with, um, here are the reasons why, and then, and then I would imagine it would be in a joint meeting, so if there was questions, um, you'd be able to respond, or they'd be able to respond to your questions. Um, and then the select board could choose either to continue our current options or make changes to the plan or the, um, who the insurance is from. So during, and again, because I'm not familiar with this process, do, are they presented with like a, a budget amount? Like, you know, in order to, you know, Again, because I don't want to see people wasting their time on this committee, and, and I think an insurance com advisory committee is a good thing. I truly do. But I, would, I wouldn't want to see them putting all this time and effort into plan recommendations that the town just can't possibly afford. And, and you know what I mean? There's potential for that, right, if they don't have a a cap or a dollar amount or? I think you've hit on one of the, one of the, I guess, tension points in government in general is that finance committee, select board, town meeting, they deal with the budget. Boards and committees, they get a budget <laughs> and they have to stay within it, but they don't necessarily think of the big picture and they're, it, 
So in my mind, sorry. So so so. In in. in it's important that when they're charged, when the committee's charged, we can give them what we spend right now for insurance. Yeah. We can tell them that, and, and, and we, can give, we can give numbers, right? Mm -hmm. We can also say, typically, you look, most departments look at two and a half to four percent increase. So you look at an increase of budget of two and a half to four percent, mm -hmm. but then we could also say that just so you know, tip, typically, this is this is what our budget is now. We can increase by by two and a half percent by law, and our revenue is increased by two and a half plus new growth. This is usually usually you're looking at. Hundred seventy-five thousand dollars a year for our overall operating overall. budget. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All, all, all around, and, and so we could we, we could define we could we could define the money. Mm -hmm. So we could you know, and and then if you want to go over a certain thing, then say okay, but now we have to talk about you know that's our our the right the, the wish. Right. Yeah, but how how to get there. Yeah. I guess that, that kind of question becomes, how is the format of that going to be? Is that going to be the insurance person coming to them and saying, here's the seven options that, that I've come up with in the budget that the town already has? Or is that going to be the committee themselves coming up with suggestions that they then sort of run by that insurance person? Because if it's the insurance person who's going to be like sort of leading the show there in that respect, then they're, I'm assuming they would themselves be looking at our numbers anyways and, and basing it off of that. Yeah, and, and, and I and I and I, I I think we 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 would we would kind of look at what the board looks at. This is the plan that's offered now and with the cost. Or you let's say you want to go to sixty five percent. Well we can go to sixty five percent, but to do that, this is what's gonna to happen to the other rates, right? That you could Or this something. is what happens to your benefit package. Right. You maybe had Twenty-five dollar copays, and to get to this, you need thirty-five dollar copays. Or, and and then we can look at what sort of surrounding, what surrounding towns are, what what their pay, what their plans are, and with the sixty-five or seventy, whatever the, the yeah. reimbursement. No, is. and I mean it's a it's a, it, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. But and I'm going to make it more complicated. I'm I'm sorry I have to do this for you, Jeff, but for it to work. This is going to have to be complete by October, November. Yep. So that so that we can really, you know, or or we would want it reported back to us if if we really want to do something this year. Yes. Then we have to get it early enough so that finance committee board and, and the town people have an opportunity to talk about it and not and not spring it on on the town the second week of March. So if that's the case, it seems like maybe making the, the committee a seven-person committee might encourage speed. A nine-person committee might take longer to deliberate on everything. So if we are <coughs> struggling to find people to fill the slots anyways, and we legally can, it might make sense to try to limit it to a seven-person committee anyways. In, in my, my, my only, school has, schools have to be part of it, but typically school doesn't want to negotiate during the summer. Mm -hmm. Now that may be able to change this year because we had, we're still allowed Zoom. Yeah, we can still Zoom. So may, maybe, and, and, and schools schools are closed, aren't they? My are, are kids, Frontiers last day was today. So, so how, how are you gonna get, how are you gonna get the representatives from the schools? Um, I mean, I, I think that there's certainly something that, that I think one of the directions we could give them, like you said, hey, 
here is you know budgets increase two and a half to four percent a year here's what we what we have budgeted for fiscal year 23 four percent of that is whatever um, if you're within that range that with your recommendation then we can talk about it in January if you're going to be outside of that range we need to know in October so we can start planning and, and and if it turns out you don't know in October and it's outside that range in January, we can talk about it for fiscal year 25. Um, I, I, I just think it's, it's it, insurance always been a complicated thing. And, and the other thing is that you can't, you can't decide to switch today and have it happen tomorrow. It's usually a buy-in period. Right. If I believe if we're staying with with our current provider with Maya, um, we would have to let them know in in a by the end of April what what we want our plan to be. But we need to give them enough time that that yeah. we can confirm that all the different options. Oh, okay, but 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 the, yeah, we have to get the committee together. We have to get it start talking to the you know the the the, the school um and and our employees and start start bringing that to the table so that we can hit the and start putting together and now now the time for us to start putting information together yep right absolutely yeah okay so what do you want from us you don't do you need anything I, from us i think that i just want to make sure again that i didn't miss any <coughs> groups so um, so Crystal had earlier said when we first started talking about she wanted to rep. Is is there an opportunity for someone from the board to be on that committee, or at to or to maybe not be on the? It doesn't even have to be a voting member, but can participate in the discussion. It's going to be a it's going to be a committee. They're going to open meetings. So I, um, is that I don't see. You want to do so. Yeah, I am interested. You know, I, I really am interested in it. Okay. I just so I just think health it. insurance is so important for people. I, I agree. <clears throat> I think I think what what I would the only reason that I'm hesitating is council's advice not to put managers on. And I think the idea is yep. they don't they want the committee to not be influenced by budget stuff or managers saying, oh, we can't afford to do that or, you know. So I would just, I, I think it's helpful because you have experience, you're on the personnel committee, they've talked about this already, so having you there is helpful. Um, but just as a member of the public versus a committee member. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to make it more complicated. I just... I just hate seeing people go through a lot of work to come up with what they think is a viable solution and it's just out of the park. Yeah. Okay. Jeffrey, you got a lot of work on this. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Yep. Um, but I am going to bring the treasurer collector who does our benefits in as, as a staff liaison too because I think it's important and, that she and hears I think it's all important that. that she has my get my yeah and 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 and, start, and and I think I would have I would have various plans already put put down on paper that our surrounding communities have with percentages and, and costs and and have that all all so that that goes out to people so they're it's known because I, I, we do have a lot of that information already, but we can get the more current stuff. So yep, right, and we have very high level information on that. We have like employee costs, the names of the groups and stuff, but we don't have down to the details of like what their co-payments are, what their, you know, I mean the for other towns for other yeah. towns, right. and you know, we want to make sure that the comparison, you know. Because when you hear someone else is paying 75%, well, Seventy-five percent of a plan with gigantic co-pays and gigantic deductibles 
is very different than 75% of a plan with no deductibles and no co-pays and stuff. So, yep. you know, I struggle with the just flat out, someone else is getting, you know, another town is paying 75%. 75% of what? Okay. All right. So we don't, have, we don't have to. We don't have to. I, I think it, it's a. Com, I think it's complicated. I think it's very complicated. That, that being said, I think the more information that you have, so people, so every, so, so all our people can understand, it, yep. and that's fine. I don't. I. I think that's a good thing. Jeffrey, um, select board updates. Crystal. It's summer. There's none for me. Nathaniel. I have nothing. Uh, we we announced the last la at our last meeting the passing of our our local uh, boss and post uh, came recipient Helen Rodak Helen Helen um, has services tomorrow. Um, the we've been notified by the. Housing, the Regional Housing Association, that we could use more Sunland residents applying for the senior housing. So if you're, if you are 62 or older, is it 62? Right. Uh, I thought I thought it was head of household 62 or oh, older. Okay. Head of household 62 or older, um, and there 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 are some monetary requirements. I will, but I will say. Don't you be the judge of that. You allow them to be the judge of that. If you're thinking about it, put an application in. If if you decide not to take advantage of it, that's fine. You can move on. But um, there's an opportunity at this time for some of us. So I, I highly encourage. They have to be in by the end of the month. This month, the application's in. Uh, I, I think the end of this month, and then they're doing the lottery in Next, July. Yep. Yeah, July 23rd or something like that yeah. is the lottery. So I would I would highly recommend people get their 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 applications, and that's all set. I'm all set for that. Jeffrey, Tom, administrator updates. Um, yes, one thing um, I'm just going to ask the select board. I conflated two things last week, which is the reappointments with the appointment of the new plumbing and gas um, inspector. And I think for cleanliness, I, I'd like to ask that the select board actually vote to appoint him as the plumbing and gas inspector so that it's not, I know we discussed it. Um, Anthony Logren, um, consistent with our electrical inspector, he would be he would receive uh, permit fees minus the fifteen dollars that the town keeps for administrative costs to process the fees. Um, he's a new employee, as we discussed last week. Um, had has is certified as a plumber and um, pipe fitter, and so has the qualifications. Um, so just asking for a separate vote as a new employee to appoint him as the plumbing and gas inspector. Anthony, is that Anthony right? Logren. Okay, yeah. so I motion we appoint Anthony Logren as the plumbing inspector. Seconded. Motion made. Seconded to appoint Anthony Logren as the plumbing and gas inspector. All those in favor, say five by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Um, and then just the two quick things. Uh, our open space and recreation plan was approved by the state. Um, so a thank you to the open space and recreation committee for putting in the work. Uh, thank you to the Franklin Regional Council of Governments for their assistance in, in actually putting all the information together. Um, and so that plan is good through 2029. I think it's a seven year plan. Um, and then the last thing quickly um, is we looked in, I looked into moving our accounting software to the cloud. It's currently hosted on a server in town um, and there have been some recurring access issues. I got a quote and it's gonna, it would increase the cost of the software by a third. Um, so in my mind, we'll continue to, <laughs> it, it, it's, 
it doesn't make sense. I think it would it would be nice to be able to do it um, because then you could access it from anywhere with the you know a web browser. But um, I was I was hoping it would be uh, more in line with what we're currently paying, and it seems to be significantly more. And, and it's not just a one year migration cost; it would be an annual thing. So. Um, unless the select board really felt that that was something that that was worth the extra um, funds which we could certainly use some ARPA funds on um, I'm, I'm not planning on doing it this year but I would just did want to mention it in case uh, you felt differently just a quick question on that is the cost of our current system including some part of the cost of our servers that we, we keep running in town um, and not that we necessarily can just like turn the servers off if this isn't on there, but if we are going to look at cloud-based things, um, if we can get all of our services onto the cloud, decommissioning the server might end up being a, a cost savings also. Um, yeah, I don't think that we would want to do that necessarily, but we could certainly discuss it. Um, government has this as you may or may not know, has a lot of more restrictions when cloud services are mm -hmm. Uh, you know, involved, and I think especially in Massachusetts, I, I think that there are rules that there has to be something within Massachusetts as well, a copy of the whatever's out in the cloud. So um, we could certainly look into going more cloud-based. I think, you know, we basically have a virtual machine on our server that runs the accounting software, and I would say that the cost of that virtual machine is maybe 5% of the increased cost of going to the cloud, so significantly less. Okay, that makes sense, great. Okay. Th th those were my updates. Okay, so at this time, I'd l I, I will entertain a motion for executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21, a paragraph two to conduct strategy sessions in preparation negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Basically, what we will be doing is Jeff has been negotiating with the police chief. We're down to the last one or two items. We expect to reach agreement tonight. After we reach agreement, we will reconvene to vote the contract specifically. Motion? I motion we go to executive session. Seconded. We'll call a vote. Yes. Thank you. Nathaniel? Aye. Chris Fisher, Greg Chairman. Trumbly? Aye. Tom Faisevitz? Aye. Three zero. We will return to open session but to vote the contract only. Thank and adjourn. Huh? And adjourn. And adjourn. Thank you.